Okay, hello everyone. Uh, I think we can start the second week's practice session now. Can everyone hear me properly? Okay, yes. Yes, that's good. All right, perfect. Um, yeah, so the second week was concerned with basic programming in Python. Um, and I got Oh, during the week uh, so far, I got few questions uh, concerning the homeworks and um, also the content of the lecture, um, and I'll get into that. But um, yeah, I think we can first start with any questions you might have right now. So if you have a question uh, concerning concerning the course, you could ask that in the uh, in the chat now. No questions. That would be fine as well, I guess. Um, okay, you have a question. Um, Uh, yeah, so typing in Python is strong. Um, so Python is a strongly typed language, but dynamically typed. Um, those were the two things I spoke about. And the strong typing meant that objects of a certain type, so of a certain class, uh, can't change the type during the runtime. Um, so if you have an object of the class animal, for example, then this, anim uh, this object will stay an animal and you can't change this object to become an integer, for example. So that doesn't work. Um, but the dynamic typing on the other hand means that if you have a variable um, that contains an object of the type animal, that can change. So that can become an integer, but the objects itself, which lie behind the variables, they don't change. Um, does that already explain your question? Okay, so an object is the actual um, data that is represented by um, the structure given in a class. And um, so the objects are the things in your computer memory where uh, you have the contents of the member variables of this class and um, there it's defined how the functions work on this object whereas the variable just is a name which basically points to this object in memory and um, you might have heard about this pointer concept and um, python doesn't really implement that or, well, it does implement that, but it's in the background and you can't control that. Um, but yeah, the variable is just a name that um, maps to this object. And you can um, put something other behind this name, so you can change the content of a variable. But that just means that this variable now points to another object and uh, not that the object itself is changed. So you can have two variables, for example, pointing to the same object in memory. And then if you say the one variable, now you assign another object, then the other variable will still point to this object in memory. So the dynamic typing means that um, if you change uh, the value of a variable, so if you assign something to a variable, that doesn't have to be the type um, with which the variable was defined. Um, yeah, so 
Um, we could say that dynamic typing refers to changing the type of the variable and um, strong typing refers to the objects themselves so that objects can't change type. Um, we don't necessarily need classes, but uh, it's just a way uh, that is used in the object-oriented paradigm. Um, and classes are a way to yeah, basically contain objects in a certain way uh, that allows you to um, have this semantic object, basically. So have uh, objects of classes and these are semantically encapsulated parts of data or of functionality um, that you can have to basically show um, someone who reads code or who writes code how this uh, piece of code should uh, semantically behave. Um, so yeah, we could do everything without classes and that's called functional programming and um, that works as well. So they're equivalent in what they can do, but classes just um, yeah, are a way to represent things uh, more semantically um, meaningful to humans, I guess. Yeah, and there are also other types of languages. So you don't only have object-oriented languages and functional languages, but there are also, for example, um, logic uh, programming languages like Prolog, for example, and even some more. But I would say that functional and object-oriented are the most common ones. Okay, so the question about task two in the homework. Uh, for task two in the homework, I want to append the elements that are not in the uh, that are not in a but in B two list. Um, this only returns the string cake and not the three. How can I solve this? Um, okay, so maybe we could go into homework questions later, and just for now. Um, are concerned with yeah, programming stuff in Python. And then we can look into uh, the homework questions later. Um, and then I'll open, open the homework and then I can have a look at what exactly you mean. Um, then there was another question of how you uh, can index over tuples. Um, just yeah, basically the same way as with lists. You can uh, use the square brackets to index tuples and you can also use them in a for loop. So you can write for i in and then a tuple. And yeah, that will just iterate over the elements of this tuple. Um, just the difference to lists is that you can't change any values inside the tuple. And you can also not append to the tuple. So um, it has a fixed size, the tuple, and uh, you can't change the elements inside them. And by the way, if I miss any questions, just write them again um, so that I can see them if I missed any. Yeah, so the difference between print without parentheses and print with parentheses. Um, in Python 3, so the Python version we use and which is um, the one that is still maintained, uh, you have to use the parentheses. In Python 2, you didn't need them because back then Python uh, print was a uh, keyword and 
Uh, you could just write print space and then anything you would print. But um, Python 2 uh, is no longer supported. And um, yeah, in Python 3, you'd need the parentheses for the print because in Python 3, print became a function and function calls always need the parentheses. So you basically don't really have to worry about uh, the print without um, without the parentheses because that's Python 2. And as Chris wrote, yeah, Python 2 is dead. Um, yeah, so about the arcs and quarks, uh, so the arguments, the asterisk arguments and the keyword arguments in Python. Um, I wanted to get into that a little later in this practice session as well. Um, you don't have to have a really deep understanding, but it probably would be nice to like, know what they are and how they work. Um, okay, yeah, just Chris. Chris just wrote uh, he's going to do that next week. So, yeah, maybe I don't have to get into that this practice session, um, but that will be covered on Tuesday's lecture as well. Okay. Um, yeah, I don't want to make this practice session too long anyways, because the lecture was already more than 90 minutes. Um, and we don't really want to exceed the three hours um, per week because there are two official sessions per week, uh, each with 90 minutes. And even though it is online and you can't really stop us from making longer videos, I think it would not be nice um, to have more than the, uh, the amount that is specified in the course. So yeah, this session will not be 90 minutes, but a little shorter. Okay, but then if there are no more questions regarding Python itself, we could go into the homeworks. Oh, there's another question. Okay, yeah, so the, the truth value testing. Um, that's a little weird, but uh, yeah, maybe I open I can share my screen for that and then show you um, how that works. Okay. Hopefully you can see my screen now. Does it work? Okay. So then if I just open a terminal here, or maybe I just put it to the side so I can see the chat still. Um, and if we just start the Python interpreter, uh, I can show you how the, the bool converting works. Um, yeah, so you ask about um, the bool one, bool of one, for example. So if you say bool of one, it will be true. And this bool function just converts any value you put into, into a boolean. Um, but I guess the confusion that arose um, from this is that I talked about um, saying the bool of something versus uh, saying object equals equals true or equals equals false, because there's a difference. Um, and if we say one equals equals true, this will still be true. Um, but for example, if we say bool of two, this is true, but uh, two equals equals true is then false. And this uh, might be a little confusing at first, but the difference is that um, the true value in Python actually is a one in the background. And that is because the bool object, uh, the bool class in Python is derived from the integer class. And this true name 
so the capital T and then lowercase ru um, is just a different way of representing a one and the false in Python is just a different way of representing a zero. And um, if we say one equals equals true, it actually compares the value that is stored behind this true, which is a one. And if you then say two equals equals true, then it will compare two to one, and that is not the same. And this is why this is false. But this bool function in the background that will not look at the actual value that is stored behind true and false, but it will look at what you put into um, the function and how this should be interpreted. So bool of two is true. Um, and as I said, that um, zero is the only integer that is false. Um, so yeah, okay, that already resolved the question. Um, yeah, that's a little confusing, I guess, but once you get it, then it's quite an easy concept. Just have to know that behind the true and the false, um, there actually are the integers zero and one in Python. And that whenever you want to check if some other object is um, evaluated as true or false, you should use the bool function. But you could also use um, just an if. So if we just say if two, then print hello, for example, then this will, oh, I um, misspelled print. And this will print hello. So if two is evaluated as two, because this if uses this bool function in the background. But if we were to write if two equals equals true, then print hello. Then we get nothing because this if uh, this two equals equals true evaluates to false. And uh, this will not be executed because this if false doesn't execute the if part. Okay, so yeah, and there was another question about the homework if the deep copy um, from the copy library is allowed. Um, it's not because in the tests we check if you import anything and if you do, then uh, the test will fail because we want you to just use the native Python code um, this week. Um, yeah, and Chris already uh, answered that. And then, yeah, I didn't see any more questions about Python then. So maybe we can have a look at the homework. And the question was here. Um, so you want to append the elements that are not in A, but in B to a list. And the code you already have is this. So maybe I'll just copy this. And uh, test this out. Um, so this would be the code, I guess, that you tried. Um, yeah, maybe just use that inside the second task was, I think it was the duplicates one. Was it duplicates or was it, f um, was it the palindrome? Okay, you, yeah, can you obviously use that? Thank you for that. Okay, and it was duplicates, okay. All right, so if we if we use that in here, um, yeah, this was not meant for this, I guess. Okay, then I'll just use that here because you already defined the list. Okay. Um, okay. So the problem was that um, you wanted to add elements to A, which are not in in the list, right? 
or which are not in B. Um, yeah, so you can use this list set of the list. Uh, I also showed that in the lecture and this will just um, show you the unique elements inside the list. And um, yeah, so there are different ways you could approach this task. Um, I don't want to spoil the solution here, of course, but um, there are a couple of functions that could help with that. Um, and if you have the unique elements already, there is, for example, a function uh, with which you can count how many occurrences there are of an element inside a list. And um, you could use that to check for each unique element how often it is um, occurring in this list. And uh, by that, find out if it's a duplicate or not. Um, but I'm not 100% sure what exactly you wanted me to do. Because if I use this here, um, so yeah, if I execute this, okay, so you created A which are the unique elements of the list. And then you said B is just the list. And then you iterate over this list. And if um, the current element is not in A, then you, then you append it to A. And then you yeah, just print everything. So it starts with hello. I guess that's this print here. And um, then goes over to cake, which is in here. No. Uh, the problem might be the order is wrong because um, the set is not ordered and it messes up this order in here. So we start with hello and three. Um, Yeah, I'm not 100% sure. Maybe it's also a problem of um, parentheses. So if we group this, will this give us something different? No, it's still the same. Um, yeah, so... Uh, you print everything three times. Um, and this just iterates over the list now. So we have hello three cake 93 cake again. Okay, so this is just iterating over the list and printing everything. And then you want to check, um, we can for example say and equals empty string here. And uh, this will say, uh, this will tell the print function to not include a new line in the end, but it will just um, append this empty string to the end, which does nothing, of course. And then in here we say um, print, for example, um, not in A. And then if we run this, nothing happens. Oh, it's just, okay, so none of them were in A. Yeah, none of them are in A. Um, which is weird, I guess. Because they should be in A, right? <laughs> Since A contains three cake, hello and 90, they should theoretically all um, oh no, of course, yeah, that makes sense because there's a knot here. And if, yeah, this is also not stating the correct, yeah. Yeah, this is correct. <laughs> so if you write an else here and then we print is in A, 
then we get yeah all of them are in a which makes sense because a contains all the elements that are in b as well so yeah what exactly was the question then because you had this not here and this said that uh, so this checks um, if an element is not in A and everything you have in B is also in A because A are all the unique elements of B or of this list. Okay. So you would try again. Um, but maybe I just didn't understand your question correctly. Um, or do you think you can understand what you have to do now? Okay. You think you know what to do now. That's good. Um, okay, so are there any more questions regarding anything um, anything I said in the lecture or something about the homework? Nothing so far. Okay, so if there are no more questions, um, and Chris will get into the arcs and quarks next week, so I don't have to cover that right now. But you will learn about that on Tuesday. Um, then I guess... Oh, yeah, right. I wanted to say something about um, the questions I got during the week. Um, it was mostly about the indentation and how... Uh, there was a, a problem, apparently, with the homework that um, some people got an indentation error when just writing something in uh, the homework and executing and this is because uh, when creating the homework we use tabs and if you use if you use Jupyter lab to edit the homework files you can see where the tabs are because the tabs are displayed as little arrows and um, Jupyter will use spaces as tabs so, so even though you press the tab button on your keyboard it will insert a couple of spaces and uh, this will confuse Python because um, yeah, it doesn't work with tabs and spaces in the, in the same file. So you either have to use tabs or spaces. And since the homework has tabs, um, either you have to convert all the tabs to spaces first or use the actual tab character, um, which I'm not sure if it works in Jupyter, if you can do that, but um, for example, in Atom, you can you can just use a tab. So if you press tab, it will insert tab and not spaces. Um, but then if you want to use spaces, you can also configure um, Atom so that it uses spaces instead of, um, instead of tabs. And there's also, if you go to packages and white space, this is pre-installed in, in Atom. There are these options of convert tabs to spaces and convert spaces to tabs. Um, and this will just yeah, convert all the tabs to spaces or spaces to tabs, as the name suggests. Um, and yeah, you can use that to, for example, convert the files to the different uh, to the different way of the of using indentation. Uh, um, I personally 
pre prefer the tabs of the spaces. Um, but that's just something. Yeah, that's that's my opinion. <laughs> if you if you want to use spaces, that's of course fine. So you can also use spaces also in the homeworks. Um, just make sure that it's consistent over the whole file. And I think I, I stopped the screen sharing, right? Yeah, so the people in the live session didn't see what I just did. <laughs> so if I stop this up again. Um, yeah, so here in Atom, when you go to packages and white space, you have these two options of convert tabs to spaces and convert spaces to tabs. So you can use that to convert the homework files, for example. Um, or you can also just use Atom and use tabs, so then everything should be fine. Um, I just heard that some people had the problem that they got indentation errors when editing the file in Jupyter Lab. Okay, and okay, yeah. And the question was actually about about the tabs and the arrows. Um, so yeah, in Jupyter Lab, I'm not sure if you can use the actual tab characters for indentation, because if you press tab, then it will just insert a couple of spaces. Um, I don't know if you can change that somewhere in the configuration. I actually don't know. Um, I mean, you probably can, but yeah, if you want to try to change that in Jupyter Lab, um, maybe if you find a solution, you can post it on the forums. Um, but yeah, you can use Atom to convert them. There are probably other ways to convert them as well. Maybe Jupyter Lab can do that as well. Um, yeah. It's just preference. So if you want to use spaces, you can use spaces. If you want to use tabs, use tabs. They're not very big differences. So I hope that answered that question as well. And there's still discussion going on about strong and weak typing in the chat. <laughs> so yeah, maybe if you want, Chris, you can also unmute yourself and explain that if you want, which might be easier than um, just writing in chat.
All right. Yeah, it's a little confusing and different people say different things about strong typing in different languages. Um, yeah, it's, it's not really a concept you have to really know for each language because um, it will not change much in how you write the code. So are there any more question, any more questions um, regarding homework this week or um, just the lecture content or whatever? Have all the installations worked by now? So has everyone installed Python successfully? I see no new messages and I'm guessing that's a good sign. Oh yeah, still the post build thing. Um, so you don't have to execute that to get everything running. Uh, the post build would just install some uh, Jupyter Lab extensions, uh, which you don't necessarily need for this course. Um, and the post build script only works on Linux, we found out. Um, but yeah, so there probably still will be this uh, Windows installation video where we'll also cover um, how you do the post build stuff on Windows. But for now, you don't really have to worry about um, executing the post build on, on Windows. You'll just install some extensions. Okay, but then if nothing else comes up, I think we could also wrap this session up. Since the lecture was already a little more or quite a bit more than 90 minutes, um, I think this should already be enough. And if there are no more questions, um, I guess we can end this practice session. So if you have any question that we would like to ask, do that now, because this is the last chance in this session. Otherwise you can still, of course, write in the forum or on Blubber or in the Stack Overflow teams. Okay, but then I take the silence as we're done here and there are no further questions. Okay, and I hope the recording worked and um, that you were also able to hear Chris. Um, but yeah, if there is a bit of silence um, in the middle of the video, then you will know that it didn't work. <laughs>